everyone, Nick Good here, and welcome to another episode of Getting the Goods, where real estate agents are gonna share their tips and tri tricks on how they built a successful business. Today, we have Elizabeth Austin. Aust Elizabeth, tell me a little bit about yourself and what got you into real estate. Sure. So as of right now, I'm actually the team leader for the Good Home team here at our Dallas location and our Houston location. Um, but getting into real estate, something that I've always wanted to do, um, me and my family, we moved a lot in our life. So I've always inserted myself to be a part of that process. Um, so when I graduated high school, I graduated in 2009, didn't think it was a great time to get into the market. So decided to go get my bachelor's degree in fashion. Went through four years of school, worked in that business for nine months before I realized this is not what I want to do. I want to go and be more in control of my own income, my life, um, my job, how I can just manage everything and moved down from Missouri to Texas, jumped into real estate school right away and then just never looked back. So you moved down here with, I'm assuming, no sphere? No, I, I'm actually from Waco originally, but I lived in Missouri for about 12 years. So I did have my sister down here. I had an aunt and an uncle, and I had my cousin and her husband down here. So very little family, but family who had all just purchased a home in the past three years. Of course, that's how it always so, works, right? Right. So, so tell us about your business when you first got in, and then what does it look like today? So when I first got in, I was just really confident because I'm a big pupil person that I would be successful right away. Um, my aunt was also considering buying at the time, kind of looking into it. So I really thought I was about to walk into a deal here. Uh, big news, she's still in the same house, so she never bought. Um, and so I was working a lot of leases for my office. I was a solo agent and really did not know what to do. Um, I kind of knew that lead generation was a big part of becoming an agent, had no clue what that was in real estate school, did learn it when I came uh, to my brokerage. Um, but still wasn't doing it. I would come to the office anywhere from four to five times a week, but I'd be working on social media. And then eventually I would work on listing presentations, buyer presentations, never really lead generating. I actually thought about even leaving the office and then finally um, saw a mastermind with what other successful agents were doing and realized I've got to sit down and lead generate and started getting to work um, the day after that mastermind and started building my book of business. So in order to, when you first started building that book, what did your schedule look like at that time? And does it look any different today? So initially there wasn't necessarily a schedule to it. It was just me coming in, kind of set my own time of I want to be at the office by nine and figuring out what lead generation looks like, how to do it, where do I even find leads to call, um, what actions do I want to take. Just started like learning some people were buying lists and mojo and where I could find that, started doing very little. And uh, then was actually when I joined the team that I really put a structure on myself and a schedule on myself um, to lead generate every single day. So initially, as a solo agent, it was really just leases. I ended up joining a team which provided me with the opportunity with leads to work, but also the structure and to surround myself with successful people. So initially, I put structure on myself. I would wake up every day at 6.45, be out of the shower by 7 a.m. And while I was uh, putting my makeup and doing my hair, I would lead generate from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., avoid driving to office during the busy traffic time here in Dallas, and then I'd get to the office by about 9.30 and continue to lead generate from there. So what was your biggest struggle when you first got in, and what is your biggest struggle today? I think when I first got in, it was knowing what to do, because if you're in this industry at all, you know there are so many different ways you can build your business, and the hardest part is that it's it all works. So you really have to find out what's best for you and what you're gonna work. Um, so for me, figuring out what I was gonna do was, was really tricky, figuring out where to find the business. Um, once I figured that out, which the team really helped me do, that is then when um, I knew that I could hold myself accountable to the structure to take the activities. Um, today, my biggest struggle is probably finding enough people to be in business with, um, but it's still also how do you manage um, growing a business as well as continuing to work inside the business every single day. Right, absolutely. And so uh, what was what is the one major reason do you think agents fail? Since you're you know, saying you're struggling to find you know, agents to get in business with, I'm sure that you're seeing a lot of people that unfortunately don't make it. So right, what do you absolutely. think that is? Um, I think there's a few reasons. So I think one is Everyone gets into this business. Everything that I hear constantly is for time freedom and to make a ton of money. And everyone wants to make that $100,000 number. 
um, which is great and it's possible and I think the biggest thing is is a lack of expectations from the get-go of what it's actually going to take to be successful in this business um, I think most people aren't prepared as much as they know it's a commission-based job they're not financially prepared to take this leap into 100% commission-based to give it the time that it takes to build this business. If you only have two months of money, three months of money to live off of, it's not gonna cut it. I would truly say someone needs to be prepared with six months to a year, assuming that they're not working elsewhere, and I would really say give it full time. Um, and then I think the other thing is they don't live and breathe by their schedule. I think that's so crucial, having your schedule set up every day to where at least around the most important part of your day. So for us as agents, it's lead generation. I can't say it enough. Whether that's even for me who's looking for talent, that's still lead generation, looking for people who can help us grow our business the way that we want. So um, I think most people will let every other part of this business get in the way and not time block out for that every single day. So schedule, so what does your schedule look like? Every single day, Monday through Friday, it is time blocked uh, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. for lead generation, 11 a.m. To, to 12 for lead follow-up. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday, it's time blocked from 8 to 8.30 in the morning that I'm script practicing with my team. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, it's time blocked from 11.30 to about 12.30 that we're going to do additional training from there. Every Thursday from 4 to 6, it's time blocked from 4 to 6 for the call night, um, which we do every week as a team just to lead generate at a different time of day. Um, and then from there, it's open in weekly and daily, as I said, appointments. Then I'll plug those into my calendar wherever I need to. Um, and I also have extra legion blocked out in the evenings from 5 to 7. So if I don't have appointments, then I'll get back on the phones and continuing to work and grow my business. And if I do have appointments, that is the one time then I'll schedule over that and go ahead and run the appointment. So you mentioned evenings. What about weekends? Are you, are you working on weekends? Absolutely. Yeah. So I show a lot on weekends. Um, Sunday is my absolute favorite day to lead generate typically from 12 to 5 or 6. Um, so many people are home and off of work and you get such a better pickup rate. So um, I essentially do do this seven days a week and it's still more flexible than another job that you're working nine to five or nine to six. Plus there's a lot of companies out there that have weekend expectations too. And the cool thing here is when you actually put in that effort extra effort and time and energy, you actually directly see that in your, um, in your clients, in your income, um, in so many different ways. So with you being a team leader and you leading your group of agents, what is, what is it that you like to look for from a leading indicator, whether it's, uh, you know, you know, a uh, number of calls made or doors knocked, what is it that you guys look, you know, want in your group of agents? So different things that we're going to track are definitely going to be calls because that's something you can control to get you to where you need to go. Um, from there, really, I want to see appointments. And if we're down on appointments from where we need to be, then essentially it goes back to calls, how many more calls you're going to make. But, um, you know, with all of our agents, they get to set their own goals. So every agent that I work with is striving for a different appointment goal every week. Um, and so I'm personally okay if their calls don't always hit X numbers as long as we're hitting their appointment goal because that's the most important thing. But then it's looking for um, making sure they're hitting that. If they're not taking that initiative to pick up the phone, go knock more doors, um, host another open house, whatever activity that is going to be income producing in order to get their appointments where they need to be because that is what we can control. And then you can get in front of enough people to either get them to buy, sell, invest, and use you as their expert to do so. Perfect. And do you believe the market is shifting and what are you guys doing to prepare for the market shift? So I do think it's shifting. We are still in a really good market, so I don't want to confuse anyone with that, but I do think it's shifting. Um, some, some signs that we've seen, homes are lasting a little bit longer on the market. We've got a little bit higher inventory levels. Um, so for us, what we're doing is, A, we're preparing our clients for that, and we're trying to make more and more of the public aware of that too, um, and just setting those expectations from the beginning. But for us too, it is, it's kind of doubling down right now. Let's double down on our calls. Let's double down on our appointments and take advantage of this great market while we're in it. Um, and then starting to look at other opportunities. Do we need to start be start scaling ourselves up on short sales again if that's going to be coming back more and more? So um, I am a part of a brokerage and, you know, Gary Keller is very well known within the real estate industry, regardless of the brokerage you're with. And one thing he always says is, you know, always work like you're in the next market. 
So for us, that would be a down market. So it's putting our head down, it's um, hustling every single day, making sure we're making those calls, meeting enough people, talking to enough people, and then implementing different strategies. You know, maybe we were holding back on how much money you're spending in order to get clients and putting in just a little bit more time effort. So different things like that. Love it. And what is one piece of advice that you would give to brand new agents just now starting out? They have no book of business. What, what would you part your wisdom with on giving it to them? Okay, so if you're brand new, I would say figure out whatever you're going to commit to because consistency and persistency is the key in this. So if that's door knocking, if it's open houses, if it's prospecting over the phones, calling expireds, calling FISBOs, whatever it is, I don't care. It's just do it every single day and spend enough time doing it because when you're brand new in this business, you typically have more time than you do money. So you're going to have to pay that time forward. Um, so I would spend at least four hours a day on my lead generation activities. But the thing is, like I said, consistency is key. So you have have to do it every single day I would be doing it at least five days a week minimum and then follow up too. when you do that lead generation it means nothing if you don't follow up with those people that you spoke with or that you met in person so follow up with them and be persistent with your attempts to reach them and then after you've met your attempts following up until you get the the deal excellent and then I'm sure since you're a team leader and you're looking for you know agents to, to join your team how do how do people find you and and what are you looking for in that agent Sure. So you can find me on Facebook um, or Instagram or Snapchat. Don't what, find me on Twitter. What names? Uh, Elizabeth Austin. Um, I don't remember what my Instagram name is, so just <laughs> look for Elizabeth Austin. Um, you can also reach out to me directly at 214-205-7866. Um, typically what I'm looking for in an agent who wants to come on is I'm looking for someone who, who's hungry, who's ready to work, who's willing to work, uh, very learning based, um, has a lot of grit um, because this business is not easy. I think a lot of people think it's going to be super easy when you get in and it's not, doesn't have to be hard. Like, like everyone always says, it's simple, but it's not easy. So I need someone who's got a lot of grit, uh, high emotional intelligence is really important. Um, and the right attitude. I can teach you all the skills in the world, but if you can just be learning based, you've got a good attitude and you're ready to get after it, I'm ready to work with you. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on. Uh, hopefully you love today's episode. Lots of great knowledge dropped today. Uh, please subscribe, leave us a review, send us a message, let us know what kind of questions that you have. And you can personally reach out to me at 972-468-468. 5017 and we look forward to having our next guest on next week. <music>